video i will be talking about active and passive insufficiency active and passive insufficiency are functional states that occur in multi joint muscles only by multi joint muscles we mean the muscles that cross more than one joint for example biceps cross both shoulder joint and elbow joint like in this image you can see this muscle is biceps brachii and it crosses both the shoulder joint and the elbow joint another example is of flexor carpi radialis and flexor carpi ulnaris that crosses both elbow joint and wrist joint like in the image you can see they cross the elbow joint and the wrist joint quadricep crosses both hip joint and knee joint here you can see the hip joint here you can see the knee joint quadriceps is a group of four muscles rectus femoris vastus medialis vastus intermedius and vastus lateralis active insufficiency occurs when a multi joint muscle shortens over both joints simultaneously that it cannot produce full range of motion at both the joints together concentrate on the word full it means that it can produce some range of motion at both the joints but not full range at both the joints passive insufficiency occurs when a multi joint muscle lengthens over both joints simultaneously that it cannot produce full range of motion at both the joints together now you will see in both the insufficiency the muscle cannot produce full range of motion at the both joints together but the difference is in active insufficiency the muscle shortens in passive insufficiency the muscle lengthens to put it in simpler words we can say a muscle cannot multitask and bring best efforts at all areas just like humans okay there is another easy way of explaining this it can bring full range of motion it by it i mean the muscle can bring full range of motion at one joint at a time and full range of motion at other joint at another time but it cannot bring full range of motion at both the joints simultaneously because in the process it gets either too shortened as in active or too lengthened as in passive we will look at the muscle physiology to understand it more better you might know sliding filament theory see this is a sarcomere the orange part is actin and the purple part is myosin to bring about muscle contraction the myosin will pull the actin inside like this you see in a normal length of sarcomere it is an optimal length to produce muscle contraction so muscle contraction will happen efficiently in normal length of sarcomere in active insufficiency what happens is the sarcomere is shortened it is too short that the fibers will overlap you see overlapping here in passive what happens is the muscle fibers are too far away to bring about any contraction look at this distance next we will look at some examples maximal shoulder flexion cannot be achieved simultaneously with maximal elbow flexion you should try it yourself also try doing shoulder flexion fully with full elbow flexion you won't be able to do why due to shortening of biceps brachii this is active insufficiency because this muscle is getting shortened and lengthening of triceps in case of passive insufficiency why because the muscle is getting lengthened in this image the shoulder flexion should be about 0 to 180 degree 
while the elbow flexion should be about 0 to 135 degrees and you will see both of them is not achieved here another example would be full hip flexion cannot occur with full knee extension again try to do this yourself and you will find you cannot do this why due to shortening of rectus femoris this is by now you might have known is active insufficiency because the muscle is getting shortened and due to lengthening of hamstrings that is passive insufficiency because the muscle is getting lengthened this image shows hip flexion along with knee extension the normal full range of hip flexion is about 0 to 120 degrees and of knee extension is about 145 degrees to 0 and you will see that knee extension is obviously occurring here at 0 degrees but hip flexion is not equal to 120 degrees the second image which i have kept here is for comparison that shows full range of hip flexion which is not achieved in this image there is another example full finger flexion cannot be achieved if wrist flexion occurs simultaneously why you have to comment below